Hello everyone. Now that you've all been at least somewhat introduced to your calculator, I'm going to kind of fill you in that the calculator is not the end, but it's only the tool. So we'll be using the calculator to do things that we'll also be doing sometimes by hand, as is depicted here. So for instance, 3 plus 4 numeracy equals 7. On the calculator that might look something like this. 3 plus 4 equals 7. We'll also point out that down here in GeoGebra, you can do the same type of thing. As I'm introducing to these three, you can say A equals 3, B equals 4, C equals A space A plus B. See how that does with that. There you go. So the concepts of being able to do different things uh, in different engines and realizing that it's all describing math, which is many, many dimensions. We're going to work in three and four, three being X, Y, and Z, and T being the fourth one. You've been doing that in AutoCAD from day one, whether or not you realize it or not. You've been doing it since the day you were born. So how do we do that? Well, mostly we do it by taking advantage of something called matrix algebra. So we're going to see very often if we're going to be describing it a set of points, a whole lot of points, it'll be a list of lists. And our lists are going to be here, x1, y1, z1. That describes one point. Sometimes this would be T1, but very often we're going to see when we're trying to do transformations, we're going to just add a one filler. X2, Y2, Z2. That's the second point. X3, Y3, Z3. Again, the filler. Dot, dot, dot. X sub N, Y sub N, Z sub N, and 1. And what these would describe, if you would, would be points. Perhaps that would be x1, point 1, point 2, and point 3. So those three points, depending on how you put them, be, put things between them, generally describe a shape. We're going to be, generally when we're playing around, are going to be describing the W shape, something like that. And the reason we've got it kind of like that is we want to make it look like Cassiopeia. So we can realize that Cassiopeia rotates around the North Star, which is someplace way up there every 24 plus hours. So we, we're going to use Cassiopeia for this reason that each of the points are a little bit different. So when we twist it around using transformations, we'll know what to do. So we'll all have you generate your own Cassiopeia. And then we'll talk about how we deal with this kind of this uh, matrix this is called. And this has n number of rows and m number of columns. So this right now has four rows and n columns. It's a four by n. n meaning you can have any length you want of this matrix. And if you think about an AutoCAD drawing or any kind of drawing, you've got a great number of points. All right, so we'll talk about lists, right? Usually lists, you key them in this way, x1, y1, z1, but they actually go in the calculator stacked up, x, y, z, and we're going to prove that right now by making um, three different lists. We're going to turn on the calculator here, and then we'll put them together in a in a, in a, in a um, matrix. So here's how you make lists. And we're going to use the L4, 5, and 6 for lists are, th are three points. Though later on you're going to see we're going to reserve these standard L ones for um, for something different entirely. We're going to really going to want to put a bunch of X's in L1 and a bunch of Y's in L2 because that lets us graph X versus Y. So we're going to reserve those, but for now we won't. We're going to learn to use the squigglies. So we're going to say 
second squiggly. I'm just going to make the first one, comma, two, comma, three, second squiggly, stow it into second L2, L4, and now that's in list four. I'll do it again, second, I'll do now 10 for my second list, 10, comma, 20, comma, 30, and notice I am not having you do it by the stat command like you did in other classes, and that's for the, the reason is, is because of transferability and programmability. I'm going to stow that into second L5. And I'm going to now finally do a final one. Second, open squiggly, 100, comma, 200, comma, 300, close squiggly, stow into second, L6. Go to, notice I didn't use the close squiggly, therefore I got an error. That's going to be something that comes up a fair bit. Different programs have different parameters. So now we've got something in L1, I'm sorry, L4, L5, and L6. Remember these little L's in the front mean typically it's a small, it's a list, and you can't just type L, you've got to do the pull down. The pull down for an L would be here, second list, ops. That's the L you have to use if you're naming a list. So. We've jumped to where we want to go now is we're going to learn very often that we're going to want to take our points and put them together in a matrix. This is going to be done because we've learned the unit circle for a reason. We've learned the unit circle so we own it and so that we can start turning things really 90 degrees at a heartbeat because we know in the cosine the sine of 90 degrees. We know the cosine is one and this, I'm sorry, the cosine of zero is one. The sine of zero is zero. The sine of 90 degrees is 1. The cosine is 0. We also know those numbers for 30, 45, and 60. And many of us are learning that at least we know the sine of 15 degrees is 0.258. Therefore, we can know the cosine. And right in that, we have an ability to start turning things at 15 degrees without getting overly worried. 15 degree increments without getting overly worried about... Um, the, hitting a lot of buttons in the calculator. All right, so what we're going to do on a regular basis is we're going to stack up our matrices this way, X, Y, and Z, and then sometimes we're going to need to flip them doing something called a transpose. So we're going to learn here what a matrix transposition is, and that's just shifting the rows and columns, and then eventually what an inverse is. But first, we're going to learn how to use one of the matrix math functions to put lists together into a matrix and here's where they are second matrix math list to matrix and then you comma delimit all of the lists you want to put in there so in our case it's second L4 comma second L5 comma second L6 comma and now you then finally ended up with the matrix you want to put them all into I'm putting that into matrix A you notice how the matrix has a set of brackets around it again I would point out that the program you cannot just type in that bracket you've got to grab from the list that it gives you in the matrix um, keys so we're gonna close that and we, we've done we put L4 L5 and L6 into A and then you can see that even though you line these up this way, they're going to stack down. That's kind of just a proof to you to how these things are generally done in the calculator. And so we can take a look here by hitting second matrix A, and you see that they're stacked down one, two, three. All right, so how do you do a transpose? A transpose on a, vec on a matrix is, um, it has to be, Typically, it's got to be a 4x4, four four, I think. I might not be certain of that, but um, or a 3x3. Three three. In other words, it has the same number of columns as rows, so you can flip about that diagonal. And so you can do that by hitting... It's an odd one, because what you do first is second matrix. 
you give it the matrix and then you do second matrix math you see that T for transpose another small letter and that's going to transpose your and we can do it again second matrix A second matrix math transpose so that just flips flipped it back oh we never flipped it so that does a transpose so I actually haven't stored it very often you may be doing this which is second matrix A second matrix transpose and then storing it right on back into A so you've transposed it and stored it on back on top of itself second matrix A it's a typical programming technique now you see it's transposed and now you can do it again flip it back because if I now say second matrix A there it is and now I can do second matrix A second matrix math transpose store it into second matrix A and everything is back the way it started that's just an unusual because the order operations on the calculator punch we will be looking at doing inverses in a number of different formats. We'll be looking down in GeoGebra, in Wolfram Alpha for sure, in the Excel engine when you're done with that, and in Google's spreadsheet document. And I will point out that Google's spreadsheet document deals a little bit better with these matrices through a little less, they've got a little bit less of a gilding or a wall there. Um, because matrices, I think Google knows that they are not something to be shied away from. They're something that should be followed up on from the time they're first introduced back uh, in, in the elementary grades. For some reason, we drop off on those. We call them spreadsheets. We don't call them matrices. Um, we should be because of the movie they call The Matrix. But that said, any matrix that's a 3 by 3 then has an inverse. Remember, the inverse is the number. The definition of inverse is the number that you multiply a number, another number by to get one. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the inverse of A and put it in B right now. I'm gonna take the second matrix A inverse and store it into second matrix B. And you'll see it's a very singular matrix. Ah, interesting, because of the way this is set up, that's an odd matrix and so it does it has a singular matrix so it's a bit of an error quit so I'm gonna go into just to now for demonstration to finish out my 15 minutes to go into second edit a and I'm gonna change a couple of numbers here we go down here and change that to 2 and I'm gonna take that to 36 and I'm gonna change that to 36 and now I'm gonna hit that there it should be now relatively second quit now if I do the same thing, second matrix A inverse, store it into second matrix B, it should go. And now if I take second matrix A times second matrix B, remember the definition of inverse is a number which multiplied by the number gives you one. This gives you the singular matrix, a singular matrix, a unity matrix. And so in that, those powerful tools of transpose, the inverse of a matrix, and then the ability to go ahead and take lists and form them into a matrix, that with a couple other tools done in a couple different engines gets you really far. I'm going to point out a couple things before we end up with the last 15 minutes. Many programs take a space or nothing as a multiplication. You'll find that in uh, Wolfram. Most programs will take a space, not like AutoCAD, as a carriage return, but as a multiplication. So we've looked here at the TI+. Plus. This is the flash debugger for those who want to download that. You can do it on your calculators, however. We've got Microsoft up here with Ink Tools running a Bamboo. And we've got GeoGebra, which will do all of the same above. It's some ways easier. Thanks for listening.